With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. How would you like a 15% discount to my daily email, the stack of stuff, the show notes, discounts to the conference, all of that? All you need to do is text the word SHOW to 33777. You'll get the annual subscription with a 15% discount to my daily email. You'll get the stack of stuff, the links to the show notes, discounts to the conference, and so much more. All you have to do is text the word SHOW, S-H-O-W, to 33777. Text SHOW to 33777. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the Fruited Plain. The phone number 877-973-7425. As always, Dick Eric, E-R-I-C-K to 33777. Get the podcast, the live stream, all that sort of stuff. I have a guest. I have to introduce him in a way I would not introduce anyone else on this program by and large. Because uh, on the list of people I think most highly of on the planet, he is in the top five. Uh, And I do not work or live in Washington, D.C. or New York because of him. One day he confronted me in the offices of Eagle Publishing, my former employer and nemesis. And he told me, don't ever move to Washington. Keep your family out of Washington. And I took him up on that. Uh, he, his advice has always been golden and he's also like, uh, one of the most, uh, important people when it comes to opening people's eyes as to how bad the media is because he runs the media research center. He is my good friend, Brent Bozell, who's never been on the show before. Brent, how are you? Eric, how you doing? I, I, let, let me, before we say anything else, let, let me, let me, uh, go right back at you. Yeah. You, you are one of the most principled men in the conservative movement. You're also one of the most courageous because you've taken stances, and a lot of people might disagree with you, uh, but you've been rock solid in your principles, and that's and that's why I think you and I get along very well for that reason. <laughs> yeah, man, I got to tell you, I, I miss seeing you too. I was talking to our buddy Greg a couple weeks ago that I, I got to get up there, and next thing, thing, time I do, I got to come by and see you because it's been a while since we've seen each other in person. Please do. We have new offices overlooking Dulles Airport, and uh, we can watch planes land. Wait, wait a second. I, I mean, I know you said to get out, of, not to come to Washington, but moving to Dulles is like, I mean, you might as well be in South Africa as far as that. Good Lord, that's a hike out the there. The next step is going across the highway and getting on one of these planes and never coming back. Now, we're doing a cruise. We should get you on this after the elections next year. And I've told people on the cruise that, that if we win, we're going to be drunk and partying. If we if we lose, we're going to get drunk and just never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea. Let's go to a tax haven. Um, all right. So I, I got to get into this with you because because you guys <clears throat> discovered this. And, and so here this is from well, let me just read it from the Daily Wire. Uh, Records unearthed through a Freedom of Information Act by the Media Research Center found the State Department paid for trainings that were created mostly by German disinformation activists and that the program was organized by an advocacy group that promotes similar laws in the U.S., essentially teaching kids that uh, anything that comes from conservatives is bad news. Yeah, this is true. This is true. It's, uh, it's something that ought to frighten uh, every American. Uh, we're, and we're finding one more examples of this. Uh, last fall, through a FOIA, we discovered that the Department of Homeland Security, uh, under an anti-domestic terrorism program, was targeting numerous conservative organizations and linking them to radical Nazism and showing a pyramid where it starts with the Republican National Committee and MAGA um, and the Heritage Foundation. And the next level is Turning Point and PragerU and a couple of others. The next one becomes um, uh, fascist organizations I've never heard of. And then the top one becomes the militant fascist organization. And it showed uh, uh, the pyramid of how one eventually will lead to the other funded by the American taxpayer, 
do an anti-domestic terrorism program. Just let that one sink through. Now, the one that we have found is going through the State Department. And in this case, it's the, the, it's the U.S. Embassy to Germany that set up what they call this media log on propaganda. They teamed up. This is Germany that has the greatest censorship of the EU today and has a bit of a rich history of censorship in the last hundred years. Uh, they teamed up with this left-wing university, the University of Würzburg uh, in Germany, that to, to do a program designed to teach teachers how to teach children how to turn against conservative against conservatives all the way down to the kindergarten level i'm not making this up these 700 teachers that have gone through the seminar program are being taught to look at the media through the lens of these two companies at Fontes and NewsGuard. These are two companies that purport to be objective uh, analyzers of the news. They are both left-wing organizations with a record of constantly labeling conservatives, who probably have you on the list, I'm, not, I'm sure they say have you on the list, as either rely, unreliable and or dishonest. To tell, put everything in its own perspective, NewsGuard is partially funded by George Soros. And of they, these, are the, these are the arbiters now that are being used by the State Department-funded program to teach children. All the way down, I'm not making this up, it includes video games. It even includes Lego games that are being presented with these messages to teach children about how bad conservatives are. Even including, and the second, that's part one. Part two, we're going to show next week how this is now the Department of Homeland Security has taken this program and they're distributing it nationwide to include, even include cash prizes for children to do videos and post them on Instagram attacking conservatives. Good grief. Yep, wow. Yep, yeah. Now, now, you know, I, I was explaining this to somebody and he said, my God, it's an Aryan youth movement. And, and I said, yes, it's an Aryan youth movement, but it's being trained with Maoist indoctrination camps. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the Nazis and the commies were kissing cousins. Um, good Lord. Uh, it, yeah. it, it, you know, so related to this, I saw this this morning. From Nate Silver, he highlighted this, and, and I, I actually can't say on radio the words that he used, uh, but he was mocking this. Uh, the World Economic Forum just released their 2024 Global Risks Report. Uh, the opinions of 1,500 experts, uh, and what do they rank as the greatest societal risks for 2024? Number one, misinformation and disinformation. you got to go mm -hmm. all the way down to the bottom of the list to find uh, – armed conflict, inflation, uh, and economic downturn. They, they, it seems like with the rise of, well, I mean, organizations like yours, the Media Research Center with, with Fox News, Newsmax, Talk Radio, they've lost the monopoly on control of information, and they are desperate to do anything to get it back. Yeah, they, they, it's, 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 that's, that's precisely the case. When, uh, when, when Facebook uh, when, uh, began, Conserva we, we saw this because we were one of the very first to get on Facebook and use Facebook. And in no time at all, conservatives were dominating Facebook and and and, and had, had rather very large audiences and vibrant audiences. Facebook saw that and suddenly the censorship began. To me it is amazing to see <clears throat> Eric that you see uh uh uh, big tech executives go on Capitol Hill, raise their right arms, and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, you know, to take to and under oath, under oath, uh, declare that there's no censorship at big tech. Um, we have through our censor track project, we have documented, not not taken uh, reports, but actually documented over six thousand cases of censorship. You never hear censorship of the left. But I can give you 6,000 examples. So when they talk about this information, they talk about some misinformation. You know, once upon a time, they used to scoff at Rush Limbaugh or ignore uh, Rush Limbaugh. But today, today they'd be bringing him up on charges. 
They, uh, they, they, they're coming after you. You know that. They're coming after your advertisers. Um, and now what they're doing is through these boards that the, these these uh, these uh, uh, blue ribbon boards that they they set up, whether it is the charity. You know, what, what, one thing people don't understand is there are a lot of these charity uh, oversight groups, self-proclaimed charity oversight groups like Charity, charity Navigator. And I don't mean that company, but there are a lot of others. And, and, and we've seen it where they come to us and they'll say, you know, we haven't heard from you. We need to get you to fill out our our survey or we're just going to have to give you a, a failing grade. Uh, you get a failing grade if you don't have in your bylaws things like affirmative action. Uh, this is how they push their, their agenda. In, into these mm-hmm. organizations. And now they're doing it through the media where they're labeling you, they're labeling talk radio in general, they're labeling the Media Research Center. We've gotten labeled as unreliable and, and dishonest. They can't give a single example of it. They just, boom, they rubber stamp it that we are. Uh, and now they're going to teach an entire generation of children that, that those are the lens through which they need to look at. And they're doing it, and this is Orwellian, they're doing it under a literacy program. Wow. Uh, so, no. I mean, what can we do? I, I mean, I guess we could have congressional investigations, but as long as we're not in charge of the White House, what, what can we do? Well, I, I just I do believe you have to have congressional investigations. And we've met members of Congress and uh, uh, we met with the speaker's office and they're outraged by this. And we've shown them the Dayton University um, agenda that was that that uh, that triggered a big grant from from uh, uh, the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, under its uh, anti-domestic terrorism program. Um, we're showing them what's coming out of the University of Rhode Island now because this is all being done. This educational thing is being done through um, uh, uh, the University of Rhode Island. Uh, we're going to have another one that we're working on now that's going to be coming out of a completely separate thing, uh, another uh, uh, arm of the federal government that is doing something with the University of Texas. I mean, this is happening all over the country. You've got an entirely weaponized federal government. Mm -hmm. The Obama people that came in there, they're running the show. You've got people here who have no fear. Look at Hunter Biden yesterday. He just, he laughed at the Congress. He laughed at them as he walked out. They they are being laughed at because they, why is he doing it? Because he knows the Justice Department is never going to go against him. There's nothing the House can do about it. There's nothing they can do to him. Only the Justice Department can do something to him, and there's no way the Justice Department is going to teach. So are they above the law? Eric, they're above the law. The Clintons were above the law. The Obamas were above the law. And now the Bidens are above the law. It's a terrible reality, but this is something America's got to understand. This is that our, our government our, 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 govern, our government does not represent us any longer. That's true. Um, it, it, we, we've got a, a group of elites who have great disdain for the rest of us, and they get away with everything. I, I got to leave it there. We're out of time, but it is always good to hear your voice. Come see me. Come see me. I will absolutely do it. Brent Bozell, Media Research Center. Uh, this amazing report. Uh, we we will make sure that you guys get more information on this. And we've talked about the University of Dayton report in the past, uh, but it is it's a remarkable piece of research done through the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, that the Media Research Center is over, has uncovered. And as uh, Brent said, they, they've revealed this to the Republican leadership team in the House that Department of Homeland Security, Department of Education, and others are training teachers how to essentially teach children that conservative news sources and conservatives are unreliable and the conservative worldview is essentially a sign of fascism. They're doing this in the public schools in America. And again, Another reason for school choice, people, another reason for school choice, get as many kids out of these school systems as possible, and through free market incentives, it'll force them not to indoctrinate, but to educate. All of these issues are completely related together, is you got to get people out of public schools, you got to get kids out of public schools, give its families incentives to make it financially possible for them to rescue their children from these public school systems. It's something we have to do. As conservatives, one of the best ways to fight back is to advance school choice nationwide because otherwise the left knows our kids are hostage during the day to a bunch of progressive educators.
Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hello there. Welcome. The phone number 877-973-7425. Let me go to Janice, who's been waiting patiently. Janice, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for taking my call. Can you hear me? Because I'm driving. Is it okay? Oh, yes. Yes, I can. Okay. okay. Just a quick comment and your opinion. I was, you know, I know you don't want to talk about last night again. <laughs> That's all right. I was just, okay, well, last night watching, you know, to play sound bites of Trump in a one on one versus the two of them, which I agree was a debacle much of the time, I think it would be interesting to play sound bites from each of their town halls one on one compared to Trump, and then play sound bites of them on the debate stage next to Trump when he was on the debate stage in 2016 and what his behavior was like. Because I think if you play some of his sound bites about blood coming from different orifices or a woman being ugly or giving childish names to every one of his competitors, I don't think he would look so different from how they looked last night and i just wonder if do you see that or do you see it differently yeah okay so no i i think that's a good point yeah he he to some degree i guess is is defining the behaviors of others and my problem is i i i i like i didn't want that from him i don't want it from them uh, and I agree. No, I agree. It's, I agree. It's deeply frustrating that they had the chance last night to define themselves and instead took every opportunity to belittle each other. And by the way, I like them both. Nikki Haley is, is a personal friend. Um, and I, well, I, I, I like them both tremendously. I, I like DeSantis too, but I just, oh, it was aggravating. But I agree. And I, I did feel like she continued to try to stay on, on the topic but she would get pulled in. That's just my opinion because I like her. But speaking of those two, the last question I have is, you know, I was speaking to a friend who has been a diehard Trump supporter from the get-go, and he seems to think there are only two choices, Trump or Biden. And I'm thinking, I said to him, well, what about DeSantis or Haley? And his response is, well, if either one of them would address the most important things of immigration, you know, and um drilling then maybe i would take a look at them and i'm thinking you're not do you watch them do you listen to them because they have yeah. opinions and i just made me think how many of his supporters don't even care to tune in and see what their opinions are because they just want him I mean, well it, it, honestly it, group or? janice yeah i actually think that's the majority of my i gotta let you go there because i'm out of time here but yeah i, I think the the majority of trump supporters are only Trump supporters. Uh, the, the, if he's not the nominee, they might not go vote at all. And that's that's part of the problem the GOP has to grapple with. Um, I used to ridicule the Democrats as a cult of personality. They're not the only ones these days. It's all about a man as opposed to the policies. All right, I got to move on. Um, where am I headed, Jim? Old Oh, Swiss America, yes. You know, as a matter of fact, y'all, um, this is actually relevant because there's a story the other day about the over-leveraging of these regional banks and how the FDIC is starting to worry we may be on the verge of, of bad things happening to regional banks, a lot of whom gave mortgages and, and loans to um, industrial, uh, re- industrial loans as opposed to residential, and people aren't going back to the office, and it's a problem. Swiss America has been sounding the alarm about this stuff and how to protect your assets. They've got this report, the secret war on cash, that's coming. The EU's been talking about banning cash. Regulators in this country are thinking about it. You should read it. All you do is you mention my name, Eric Erickson, by calling or texting 800-289-2646. 800-289-2646. You can call or text my full name, Eric Erickson, to 800-289-2646, or you can go to SwissAmerica.com slash Eric. SwissAmerica.com slash E-R-I-C-K or call or text 800-289-2646. 
Message and data rates apply. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. Y'all, I got to switch gears from everything I was going to talk about. This story just hit the athletic, uh, the New York Times. This is an amazing story. It it, it just hit the wires. (laughs) Wow. All right. Get this. I got to read this for you. This is from the athletic. In March 2023, Shelly Smith, who worked 26 years as an on-air reporter for ESPN, received a call from Stephanie Drooley, then the network's head of studio and event productions. Drooley said she wanted to talk about something serious that needed to stay between the two of them, Smith recalled. She then told Smith that Smith needed to return two sports Emmy statuettes she had been given more than a decade earlier. That request was one of many ESPN made of some of its biggest stars last year. After the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, the organization that administers the Emmy Awards, uncovered a scheme that the network used to acquire more than 30 of the statuettes for on-air talent ineligible to receive them. Since at least 2010, ESPN (laughs) inserted fake names in Emmy's entries then took the awards won by some of the imaginary individuals and re-engraved them to give to the on-air personalities. Kirk Kerbstreet, Lee Corso, Chris Fowler, Desmond Howard, and Samantha Ponder, among others, were given the ill-gotten Emmys, according to a source briefed on the matter who has granted anonymity to discuss it. There is no evidence the on-air individuals were aware they were improperly obtained Emmys. The fraud was discovered by the National Academy, which prompted an investigation. These probes resulted in sanctions beyond the return of the trophies. In a statement, ESPN said some members of our team were clearly wrong in submitting certain names that may go back to 1997 in Emmy categories. (laughs) All right. So let, let, let me just read this this paragraph so you understand what's going on here. So the nexus was college game day. Um, it, it is a cultural phenomenon. It is a massive revenue machine for ESPN. From 2008 to 2018, it nabbed eight Emmys for outstanding weekly studio show. But on-air talent up until 2023 was prohibited by the Academy guidelines from being included in a credit list. Hosts, analysts, and reporters on College Game Day could win individual awards such as Outstanding Host, Studio Analyst, or Emerging On-Air Talent, and they could win for individual features. But they weren't eligible to take home a trophy for a win by the show. The rule was meant to prevent front-facing talent from winning two awards for the same work, which the Academy deemed double-dipping. So ESPN circumvented the rule by inserting fake names into the credit list it submitted to the Academy for College Game Day. The Athletic reviewed the credit list for the years 1, 2010, 2011, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. In each one of those seven years, names similar to the names of on-air personalities with identical initials were listed all under the title of Associate Producer. So Kirk Henry was Kirk Herbstreet, Lee Clark was Lee Corso, Dirk Howard was Desmond Howard, and Tim Richard was Tom Rinaldi. They appeared in all seven years. Stephen Ponder, who's Sam Ponder, who's a woman, and Gene Wilson for Gene Wachowski appeared in five from 2014 to 2018. Chris Fulton, who's Chris Fowler, appeared in 2010, 11, and 14, and 15. Shelly Saunders, who's Shelly Smith, appeared in the 2010 list. Smith was given an Emmy for the show's win in 2008, though it's unclear how the statuette was obtained. <laughs> so they they made up, they, they just made up fake names. Aaron Andrews became Eric Andrews. Wendy Nix became Wendy Nixon. Jen Brown became Jen Brownsmith. 
and they won. But nobody verified that these people were real, and the Emmys were giving. <laughs> What a scam. Okay. ESPN has all sorts of problems. The the the, the network's going, well, now they're, they're dealing with Pat McAfee. By the way, he's not allowed to have uh, Aaron Rodgers on anymore because of what Aaron Rodgers said about Jimmy Kimmel, the consequences of, of what he said. But my goodness gracious, uh, th- this whole network, th- they just need to burn it down and start over again at this point. Good grief, the amount of... Uh, issues with ESPN from, from, I mean, this fraudulent behavior to going so woke. This is breaking news from the ES, from the athletic in the New York times ESPN. They've had to return 37 of the statues because they made up people to win them. (laughs) Wow. All right. All right. Let's, let's move on to Fawny Willis. Shall we? Do you know how I know that the Fawny Willis story is serious? Like, it's real. Forget that the woman has now been subpoenaed to her boyfriend's divorce uh, court case by the boyfriend's wife. Do you know how I know the Fawny Willis matter is serious? The New York Times is covering it, and they're not covering it as Republicans pounce. They're covering it as if it really happened. The New York Times has a big story about Fawny Willis, the Fulton County prosecutor who hired her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, to be the special prosecutor in the RICO case. And more is coming out about Wade as well, including the fact that uh, Wade oversaw an investigation and didn't take any notes about the investigation. Uh, It just more... um, issues that raise all sorts of questions about him and his behavior. It's really remarkable that uh, the guy was charged with a detailed investigation and for the government and didn't take any notes, said it was all in his head. Everything he needed was in his head. And now you've got this guy who has no experience in criminal RICO cases being charged uh, with the criminal uh, overseeing the criminal RICO case against Donald Trump and a bunch of other defendants has no experience doing it, and it turns out that he and Fawny Willis have been having an affair, allegedly, wink, wink, nod, nod, and now his wife is summoning her to court as, uh, I mean, y'all, this is this is farcical. This is farcical. But the fact that the New York Times is covering the story not in a Republicans pounce or Republicans accuse way, but oh, yeah, this happened and it's bad, tells you everything you need to know. There's there's just, I, there's a larger lesson here, though, about ego. There's a larger lesson about ego and arrogance, the hubris of these people in politics. We used to have people in politics, not and maybe they were even then the exception to the rule, but humble people. I mean, take Mike Johnson, for example, the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. He was kind of a backbencher, quiet, soft-spoken, deeply, deeply committed to his faith, rises to be Speaker. And, of course, they savage him for his, face, uh, for his faith. But he's a soft-spoken guy who, by all accounts, doesn't have a huge ego, unlike Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy climbed the ladder by desire to climb the ladder, and he got to the top. And when they removed him, he's like, well, I'm done ladder climbing. I might as well quit, as opposed to serving on his term for his constituents. He was done. He left. The massive egos of these people, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, they think of themselves as the indispensable person, that but for them, the world would come to an end. Along comes Fawny Willis and joins the ranks. Ironically, her hubris in this affair rivals that of the man she's prosecuting. She decides that she doesn't need to get the county's permission to drive up the cost to taxpayers in order to prosecute Trump. She, she doesn't take that step before getting the special prosecutor. She just brings her boyfriend in, allegedly, who's got no experience, puts him in charge of the prosecution, pays him a lot of money, 
And meanwhile, he's doting on her. They're going on cruises together, all these other things. It's It really is just amazing to watch this catch up to her. Did she think that it would go unnoticed? That You know, that's the, the sociopathic thing about all, all these arrogant politicians is that they think they can just get away with this stuff, that they will never get caught, that it will never matter. It always, in the end, catches up to you. It does. In the end, it's going to catch up to you. It is. And she doesn't see, didn't seem to think that it would ever catch up to her. And yet it has. And it could bring to an end to this case. It really could conflict her out of this. And uh, the judge could throw this case out. The judge could look at it and say, we can't reward this sort of behavior. And the best way to punish this sort of behavior to ensure it never happens again is to kill the whole case. That would make, if I were the judge and it's proven, it, what is alleged is proven, I would kill the case. I wouldn't pass it off to somebody else and find a new district attorney. I would say we can't condone this behavior, and the best way to disincentivize this behavior is to end the product that, that incentivized it, that is the case. Kill it. Get rid of it. Dismiss it. Throw it out. He should throw it out if it's true instead of passing it to someone else. And then let the chips fall where they may with her and, and accountability to the voters. She's the one who did it. The arrogance and hubris of these people that it, it, it's only them and, and they can get away with it. And and we see this in, in the rise of the elite. It's, so Brett Bozell and I were talking about this story of uh, German people training American teachers on how to teach kids conservatives are bad and make it all about in, disinformation and misinformation. The World Economic Forum, I pointed out to him, says that disinformation and misinformation is the number one threat to society in 2024. Not war, not inflation, not the economy, not even pollution or illegal immigration, disinformation. It's because these people no longer have the monopoly. They thought they, too, were the indispensable people, the elite, and that we all had to listen to them. And they've been getting it all wrong. They got it all wrong during COVID. They've gotten it all wrong with provoking inflation on how to deal with inflation. Uh, they, they've set people back. They can't admit it. They refuse to admit it. They deny it. And now, in their arrogance, they continue to believe they are the only ones with the solutions. They've, they've gotten it all wrong. But they are convinced in their arrogance that not only were they not wrong, but they are the only people who can save us. If they want to save us, they'd all go away. And if this allegation is true, Fonnie Willis should resign. She won't. She's too arrogant to resign. But she should, just like Lloyd Austin should resign for his behavior in Washington. We are now surrounded with a bunch of people so arrogant, they refuse to do the right thing when found out to be frauds. And that's kind of a damning indictment on the character of this country's leadership right now across the board. Now let's talk about something upbeat and positive. Um, the, the reverse effect here of conservatives standing up and fighting back and realizing, you know what, we don't have to rely on progressives and progressive institutions to do business. We can do it ourselves. So a group of conservatives got together and they founded Old Glory Bank. OldGloryBank.com is the bank. Uh, they looked at what's happening in the banking sector with DEI and the Wokes and debanking conservative institutions, gun manufacturers, gun store owners and the like. And they're like, you know what, we'll do business with these people. We want their business. We're conservatives, and they started Old Glory Bank. You can get a bank account there. I have one. I've got ba- I've got checking and savings. They're my bank, oldglorybank.com. You, in less than eight minutes online, you can be established with Old Glory Bank. It really is an easy process. I did it all online. I've never been to a branch. I can do deposits. I can do direct pay. Uh, everything I need goes to Old Glory Bank. They are a great financial institution. They're good people. They literally are my bank. And they can be yours, too, in less than eight minutes. You need a checking account or a savings account for your kid? Old Glory Bank. OldGloryBank.com. OldGloryBank.com. I don't have a particular landing page. I'm just happy to promote them because I've been delighted to use them as my banking institution. I think you'll like them as much as I do. Online bill pay, loans, mortgages, everything. You can do everything with Old Glory Bank because they're a real bank. FDINC insured, all that. OldGloryBank.com. They should be your bank. OldGloryBank.com. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? 
Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello there. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, very happy to have you. I got to tell you, uh, you know, this isn't actually the ad, so the... um. The, the just Old Glory Bank being my bank, and I, I I had a bank. I'm moving to Old Glory, but they've made it so easy for me just to be able to transfer stuff and great interest rate on the savings account, everything. So I, y'all, I'm I'm just delighted to have them uh, as my advertiser. Uh, they're they're really good people. All right, we, we got to move on. Uh, Iran is escalating things in the Middle East. They've seized an oil tanker linked to a sanctions dispute with the United States, saying it is our oil tanker. It's actually not. Um, but it is tied to us. They have uh, seized this oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman. Now, interestingly enough, um, this tanker was on the way from Iraq with Iraqi oil to Turkey. The reason they seized it is because we previously stopped this oil tanker because it was carrying uh, Iranian oil. And we, we stopped it. Now Iran, uh, Iranian military personnel boarded this tanker this morning um, wearing masks and, and covering their faces. And we don't know what they're going to do with it. But it escalates the tensions there. Iran has also sent uh, naval vessels into the, um, into the Red Sea. They're escalating there. And the Biden administration at this point is just sending press releases. They're not actually taking action. You know, it, it goes to the quote somebody mentioned the other day about how the Iranians operate. They, they, they've taken the Stalin tactic that um, when you're sticking, sticking the knife in, um, if, you, if, you feel, if you feel steel, you stop. If you feel mush, you keep going. Iran hasn't felt our steel they're going to keep poking and prodding and stabbing until we respond forcefully. They don't think we're serious. They actually kind of think we're weak. They don't think Biden has it together, and we know he doesn't. And I'm increasingly concerned that this is an incompetence on the part of the Biden administration I'm increasingly concerned this is willful on their part, that it is uh, not just willful, that it is a desire of the Biden administration to weaken the United States, to put us in a worse position. Just like it's increasingly clear Democrats in Washington are okay with the flood of illegal immigrants into this country because it boosts the census numbers for the Electoral College. They just got to hope they win the next four years and a Republican doesn't engage in mass be- deportation. They're, they're, they're using illegal immigrants to boost congressional appropri- apportionment numbers. And they're willing to use Iran to destabilize American foreign policy. It's by design. It's not, in, it's not incompetence. That's amazing. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.